In this video, we're taking a look at a new version of GIMP and I'm calling this new version the Ladybird version. freaky to realize that your eyes are kind of lying to you. Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com and I'm calling this new version the Ladybird version and I think you'll see why a little bit later on. Now as well as this new version, there is yet another new version which is GIMP 2.99. That one is one which is still in development and it's the one that's going to lead to GIMP 3.0. So that one will be for the ones who want to do a little bit of beta testing. There will be an actual beta testing program much later on and maybe I'll have a video about the newer version a bit later on. But we're going to start off inside of GIMP 2.10.14, the latest version, and it has a ton of new features. We'll take a look first of all at a new filter which is found under blur. This is the mean curvature blur. This blur allows us to apply very subtle blurs. So for instance with this image, it's a great looking image but it's a little bit over sharpened and what we can do is just come here and apply a tiny amount of blur and what you'll see if you can really kind of zoom in let me zoom in for you you should be able to see that there's a little bit of anti-aliasing there's a little bit of aliasing in the image without the filter but as we apply the filter you can see that aliasing is disappearing. And that's something which might take a good image, which has been a little bit over sharpened, and just remove that crispiness, which damages the image a little bit. So that's one very useful filter. I think there's gonna be a whole bunch of different uses for this filter. And it's one of the filters that, you know, when you first think about what it does, it might appear that there's not much use for it, but when you actually start working with all kinds of features inside of GIMP. There's, there's a lot of uses for this. Now, the mean curvature filter is one that came up from the Gaggle operations. And this is something in the tools menu, which uh, it, it has a whole bunch of different filters. They're not yet ready for the big stage. So these are still in development. And as they complete development, what happens is that they graduate to the filters menu or to the color menu. And I think most of the ones that are still left there are going to end up at some stage in the filters menu. Now, another new filter which has come through to the main menu is the newsprint filter. This is uh, a giggle filter. There is still the old newsprint filter if you wanna use that one. They work very differently. And to demonstrate them, I'm gonna use a new image. So this is our pinup model, and we are going to be taking a look at her with the new filter applied. So we go to filters, distorts, newsprint, and this filter here gives us different types of color models. We can have white on black, we can have black on white, we can have CMYK, we can even have RGB. Now I've applied the CMYK edit for this one, and really I worked on it for quite some time to get get it to look uh, the way it looks now. And that's the way CMYK really should look. Now as to how a CMYK edit like this should look, I did some research for Photoshop. But where the single ink is replaced with four inks, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or CMYK as they're usually referred to. Now this technique can also be used to create awesome looking patterns and backgrounds. And I actually produced a Photoshop video a few years ago. And you may want to have a look at that one to see how this can work inside of Photoshop because the way it works in Photoshop is different to the way it works inside of GIMP. And if I just zoom out a little bit, you can tell it's got that sort of newsprint feel to it. But if we put in the split view, I think you'll begin to notice that there's a difference between the newsprint and the original. The newsprint has got these kind of circular things going on. The, these are called rosettes or rosette pattern. That pattern is absolutely correct for this filter, but we're seeing a lot of bright jazzy colors for this filter where there aren't any of those bright colors inside of the original image. We're seeing bright reds and even when you zoom out, you just shouldn't be seeing those colors. And secondly, we are also seeing quite a lot of black, very dark blacks. So for me, this filter doesn't feel like it's really doing what I want it to do. 
Now, possibly if we had CMYK mode inside of GIMP, this might work in a different way and it might be a little bit more, a little bit more realistic. But if you look at a typical newspaper, if you have a picture like this, it's going to look like this, but with a pattern over it, it doesn't, the colors don't change and the, the blacks don't become too dark. So there's obviously something with this filter, which makes it a little bit less usable than I would like. But there are, there is obviously the black and white versions and there is the black, the other black and white, and there's the RGB. So you could try those. The controls are pretty easy. I'll recommend locking the patterns, locking the periods. Let's go back to CMYK. And what we can do is just to change the period, to change the overall effect. We can change the pattern from circle to diamond. This, we can change the crossing lines. And we can go to simple line. Now the simple line probably works best on with white on black. And it does produce a somewhat kind of crunchy looking pattern. So maybe this is somewhere the mean curvature blur might be a little bit of, of help, maybe. But there's a lot of potential with this one. And I actually have a video which discusses how to use it inside of GIMP. The controls have changed a little bit, but one really nice addition is this anti-aliasing over sampling. You can tell it looks a little bit rubbish without it. And as you add it, it just neatens things up a little bit. So I'll have a link to that older video, which discusses the halftone effects that you can generate with this. The next thing we're going to look at is probably the main feature with the new version. This is the canvas extension feature. So inside of GIMP, we generally speaking have layers and canvases. We can show the layer boundary for the layer here and you can toggle it on or off and you get what I call the B line. It's got black and yellow and it goes around the canvas. Now, I prefer to work with that off, but some people prefer to have it on. This shows you the limits of the actual canvas. This shows you the limits of the actual layer. The canvas is this here. It's the viewport where we see what's going on inside of GIMP. Now, if we go to image and show all, what happens is that we can actually see parts of the image that are outside of the canvas. So anything which has been cropped, we can actually see that now. And we can choose to show a particular padding color, or we can choose to show the the transparency squares. So it's up to you, you can come here and play around with these. I don't know why I chose show ruler. Let's go to show, choose a padding color or keep padding color in show all mode. And the toggle is this show all. It's a new thing inside of GIMP. This is good because it allows you to work outside of the canvas because you can now see what you're doing outside of the canvas. And as you can see, the canvas is now this black and red dotted line. And uh, that's obviously black and red. And obviously black and red is the color of the ladybird, hence ladybird edition. So we are going to look at what the full implications of this are. If I wanted to, I've got a layer called canvas. This could be, instead of some random text, we could have a note. I could have written, typewritten uh, a note in here and I could take that note, put it out outside the canvas. Normally it's not gonna show, but I know there's a layer there and I know there's a note there. So if I wanted to, I could go view, show all, and I'll be able to read the notes. And if I'm doing a very complex edit, that might be some useful information about the way that I've structured the document. So this is useful for organizing inside of GIMP. It's also useful because you can actually sample using the sample tool. You can also sample using the clone stamp tool. So you can clone parts of the image that are actually outside of the canvas, as long as you've got this baby here turned on. Another feature we really like inside of the new GIMP is the ability to automatically resize layers. So these are a bunch of features that we we're expecting in GIMP 3.0. They're coming through in GIMP 2.10 and that's awesome. The first thing I want to demonstrate is the ability to resize text layers. So in the past, if I wanted to apply a shadow, let's say a drop shadow, the drop shadow would cut off at the edge of the layer. I don't think this menu was there before. We've now got the adjust option or the clip option. This is the old method. This is the new method, tons better. 
when we hit OK, it actually resizes the layer. That's awesome. That's what we've always wanted inside of GIMP. The other thing is you can do this also. Let's go to the recently used. OK, that was too long ago. Let's go to light and shadow, long shadow. You can apply the long shadow effect as well. That will apply outside. Let's just lengthen this a little bit using this style and also I think using fading fixed length you can actually go outside of the layer once again you hit OK and it actually extends the layer that's another awesome development let's edit it's still not as good as Photoshop Photoshop takes care of everything for you but GIMP is moving in the direction in the right direction let's go ahead and look at another thing that we can do this is one that I really wanted to test and I tested it by doing this then going to filter map recursive transform so there we are we've now got a recursive transform occurring outside of the layer we can hit OK and it resizes the layer we can go ahead and choose filter recently used long shadow and you can see we can apply the long shadow to all the new text layers we hit OK and here's the magic we go to the text tool click once and it allows us to edit the text again if I edit the text and change it to what it should be then we can go back to filters recently used recursive transform okay filters recently used long shadow it's a lot more dynamic it's a lot easier to use than the old technique where you had to do everything manually now all the stuff that we've looked at so far there's actually a preferences option so edit preferences and you can go ahead uh we'll first of all look at tool options there's a feature that allow, allows you to edit on non-visible layers apparently people <laughs> needed to do that uh you can now turn that on or off i'm keeping that off I might turn it on later, I don't know. I might need to use that. We can go to, I think it's appearance and we can change show layer boundary, show canvas boundary. So we can control all those new features permanently using the preferences as well. Uh, and also whether we should show the padding in the show all mode or whether we should show the transparency checkerboard. I really like these new features. I think this is really uh, the kind of incremental changes in the interface, in the user interface that really make the software feel more professional. Let's go ahead and look at another new feature, which I think I'm going to demonstrate here again. It's basically the re resize option. So let's go to, let's actually use the free transform or unified transform. We click on this layer here and we can actually resize the layer like this and then do a rotation like that transform edit undo what you'll notice is that when i did that free transform when i did that transformation not only did the layer that i'm working on transform but if you look very closely the layer underneath is also transforming so let's turn that on you can see that's also transforming. And the thing that allows us to do that, we can actually go to view, show all. You can see that the entire image has transformed. This is being done by a new character, a new option in the unified transform options, tool options, which is the image option. So you can now free transform an entire image using that option. This should be there in other transform tools as well. Let's go ahead and look at another feature which is under image transform arbitrary rotation that allows us to do similar type of thing but just with rotation so we can rotate the entire image using that option to any angle now moving on to another new feature this is going to be an enhanced filter we go to filters edge detect neon now this has been given giggle treatment so you can now see we can control this particular filter using the split screen and canvas display that we can with other giggle filters and this is something that's really uh, it's the best thing really about GIMP 2.10 it's uh, the ability to play around with these filters inside of the, the actual canvas one other one that I want to definitely look at is the filters artistic oilify now we've got here a landscape and I'm going to create a kind of painterly effect we go to filter artistic oilify and this is one of those filters that just goes really slow. It, I think it uses just one 
computer core or one thread or something like that is crazy. But basically what it does is that it creates this beautiful kind of painterly effect. It, it really looks very different from the way it looked initially. They've added some auxiliary inputs so we can choose other layers to interact with this one. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to do that. Uh, and I think this may be the basis for a video that I'm going to be doing soon or that I might have to redo because of the new features. The other thing which has appeared inside of the new version is an improvement to the foreground select tool. So we go to foreground select, we're going to choose color, which is the new feature. You can now choose two modes and we do our selection like that. We can then choose draw foreground and I'm just going to very quickly draw a foreground for this image. And they've also changed the default so that the default is now matting 11, which I think is the one that actually works kind of okay. But we hit preview mask. And, you know, you can kind of see what's going on, but it's still a bit confusing. If we go to grayscale, we can now see the mask. Uh, we can actually see what the selection looks like in black and white. I can see we need to do a little bit of work down here so I can go to draw foreground. Let's draw a little bit of that and let's see what it does now. It's cleaned that up a little bit. So it's another way of just improving the mask before you eventually hit select. And if you are now to add a layer mask, so add layer mask selection, you would once again be able to see that particular selection as a layer mask in grayscale. Select none. There is our little mask. It's looking beautiful. It needs a little bit of work done on it. There we are. And you can play around seeing if you can actually improve the selection there. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about which is the Geckle graph. So what we can do is to create an image that looks like this. Now this image, believe it or not, is black and white. And it's actually looks as though it's color because there are these diagonal lines that go through it. And for, for whatever reason, even though the image itself is black and white, the eyes cannot help but to see color inside the image. If I just zoom out a little bit, you'll be able to see everything as though it's in color, but there's actually no color. All there are are these diagonal lines with some saturation in them. And the way we do that is that we take not the black and white image, but the original color image. We go to filters, we go to generic, and we go to Geggle graph. I might have changed some of the settings a little bit. You can go ahead and just play around with some of the numbers to see what effect that gives. But the, the effect is a really weird one. It's, it's kind of freaky to realize that your eyes are kind of lying to you when you look at the image after it's been processed. And it is black and white. And it's very hard to tell it's black and white because you've got these uh, lines just doing something with your eyes and tricking you to think it's actually a color image. But anyway, you can play around with the, with the settings here and see what kind of other things you can do with the filter. It's maybe for the geeks out there. <laughs> it's definitely for the geeks out there, but it's an interesting effect. We're going to finish off with that one. I probably will have one or two further videos just looking at some of the, the, the other features, but that's going to be it for this one. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll leave it at that. Take care till next time. Bye.